Excellent. What's up guys, welcome back. Today I'm continuing this build. It's a water-cooled build that I'm putting together in the Lian Lee O11 Mini. And there's a lot of really nice hardware in here like a RX 6800XT graphics card and a Ryzen 7 5800X. In part one, I did an outside of the box build to make sure the hardware worked. And then I did a test fitting in here to make sure all the hardware was actually going to fit inside the case the main hardware at least, and now I get to move on with the water cooling part of it. But why am I even building this system in the first place? It's so I can give it away, and that giveaway is going to help promote the charity live stream that I am doing with Kyle. It's awesome hardware returning as a charity live stream event for summer 2021, and that's gonna be very soon, this weekend, Saturday, June 26th, so join us if you can, and uh, either way, I'm gonna get the rest of the system put together. So there's the system as seen in part one and not too much has changed there. Although I do think I'm gonna make just a, a couple small tweaks to the layout here. But before I go into that, there are some new parts that have arrived. For one, I got an actual brand new EK Coolstream SE240, a slim 240 millimeter radiator. And that's to replace the one that's already mounted back there because that's that one's already used and I don't wanna give away a used piece of hardware if I can avoid it. For fittings and everything, I already showed you guys some of these and these are actually part of EK's Quantum Torque series, and I like them because they go with the color scheme. They have a little bit of a red accent on there, and uh, I'm going with the black tubing as well that came with this kit. Now, I already had four of these 90 degree uh, adapter fittings, and these kind of angled fittings are very helpful, especially with uh, the, the soft tubing, because if you want to angle the tubes in any sort of like aesthetically pleasing fashion. You kind of need to use something like this. And I have supplemented this by grabbing four more of, the, these are 90 degree fittings as you can probably see. And then these are 45 degree fittings. And I just bought four of these just to sort of add to my uh, arsenal here of things that I can hopefully use to get this put together. Quantum Torque rotary 45 degree fittings and 90 degree fittings. And here you can see the actual compression fittings mounted to those, the 90 and the 45. And uh, I kind of, I've been starting to sort of plop them onto this block here to try to figure out how that's gonna look. I feel like I'm gonna maybe end up with two 45s coming off of that and two more 45s coming off of the GPU block here. The EK stuff that was part of that kit, I've, I've actually done a little bit more research on as well to figure out like where are the inlets and outlets on that thing. The inlet is on the right or the bottom under here. Outlet is here and there's an, a bottom outlet there as well. This is intended for fill and this is intended for drain. And that is an EK Quantum Kinetic FLT120 with a D5 pump installed. This is the 120 as in 120 millimeter. This also comes in like a 240 millimeter size and a 360 millimeter size. So if you're working with a larger case, you can like fit it up against the window or something like that. And uh, it's a cool little design for a reservoir slash pump combo. This is an AMD Ryzen edition EK Quantum Velocity CPU block, and they specifically designed like the microfin channels on this and stuff to effectively cool the Ryzen chiplet design. So so that's it's good to have since we do have Ryzen chiplets on our 5800X. And then our GPU block here is the EK Quantum Vector RX 6800 or 6900 GPU block. It fits uh, the reference PCBs for either the 6800 6800 XT or the 6900, and we have 6800 XT. Another thing I brought up in the first video is that I don't have storage lined up for this build yet, but now I do. And that is a big, 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 big thanks to the folks over at Crucial. I've been talking to them recently. I was put in touch with them through Kyle. And originally I was like, okay guys, if you could provide like an M.2 NVMe SSD and then maybe a supplemental 2.5 inch drive, that'd be pretty cool. And they were like, well, you know, maybe we could do a little bit more than that. So they sent all these. That is eight terabytes worth of Crucial SSDs. We have two two terabyte P5s, and these are their higher end M.2 NVMe SSDs. They are PCIe 3.0, and they get read and write speeds up in the, I believe, 3500 plus range, 3500 megabytes per second plus range. So that's four terabytes for the M.2 spaces that are on the motherboard. And then we got four more terabytes in two 2.5 inch MX500 drives. That's a lot of SSD storage and a huge, huge, huge thank you to Crucial for providing these on such short notice. Now there's a decent chance I might need extensions or fittings or something like that, but the only thing else that I think I'm missing hardware wise is I do have one more set of SL120 fans because uh, quite a few people pointed out in the comments, I have an unused 120 millimeter fan mount here at the back. That would be good to use just to populate so it's not empty since they're unavailable. But that made me start to think about the airflow. And right now I've got three intake fans at the bottom, but they're restricted by a radiator. So I thought maybe I should do an intake there as well to kind of balance the two restricted out and three unrestricted outs that I have uh, on the top and the sides here. But then I realized uh, there's no dust filter there or anything like that. So I think this is what I'm gonna do. First off, I'm still gonna keep the reservoir down in this position where it is. I considered moving it up here because that would give me a little bit better access to the 
plugs, inlets, and outlets and stuff there, but I think I have the loop figured out, but actually, let me come back to that in just a second. So I'm gonna flip this fan, though. I'm gonna make this an intake here on the side. I've got a couple of the fans that came with the kit. I'm also gonna put back behind there to also act as intakes. That way it'll be a filtered intake over there, and we'll have two intakes here with the rads, three intakes here with rads, and then we'll have four exhausts that will be unrestricted, and I think that will be a reasonable balance for airflow. But here's how I think the loop is gonna go, starting with this inlet right here. I'm gonna come out of this radiator in a short run over to here. Then from this outlet, I'm gonna do a nice, nice soft bend up over here and into the GPU. Out of this GPU and another nice soft bend over here into the CPU. Then another nice soft bend that's going to dip down and go back behind there. Since it's hidden back there, I can use some other fittings that might not necessarily ma match with these EK torque fittings, and that will allow me to route that tubing over to where I need it to be. And then just one more little blooper from uh, here right out to here, and I'll probably use a 90 degree fitting on there just to do a straight run for that. So that is my plan for what I'm gonna work on today and then most likely be continuing tomorrow because I have some time to work tomorrow. So like I said, lots of work. I gotta get these SSDs installed. I gotta get the water cooling stuff fixed up and like flush these radiators. When I install these M.2 drives, I'll do the CPU block as well um, because this has its own back plate. So uh, I do need to pull the motherboard out and I gotta install this GPU block too. That, that takes a few minutes at least. So uh, let's get started. And now our motherboard is set up. We have our water block installed for the CPU, and uh, I just popped on a couple of those 45 degree rotary fittings there and the uh, compression fittings on top of them. And, and I think it looks really cool. I think it looks really nice. Again, red accent, silver, white, black. That's, that's the color scheme, and I think that matches it well. Also got our P5s installed underneath these. So these are magnetic panels that cover the M.2 slots that potentially, these aren't, I, I wish, I kind of wish these were heat sinks because the P5 can get hot under sustained loads. For most stuff you're gonna do, it's just fine and it, it, it'll throttle itself before like, you know, any overheats or anything like that. But uh, anyway, one is there and one is installed there. And now we can pop the motherboard back in and move on to installing our GPU water block. Okay, quick transition. We had to take uh, a field trip because you remember what I said? We're missing a couple a couple fittings. Got to pick them up from a very important spot right up here. Oh, Joe's here. Yeah, I should hold that. You're driving. Yes, good idea. Sorry. 
Here you are, this is an exclusive look at a, you know, a, a workspace that I don't think has been shown on the internet very much, but, uh, oh look, it's Kyle. Hi. Hey, we're just, Stop. we're just stopping by. I wanted to show people your setup and your wall-mounted PC. I'm sure everyone has already seen this stuff. While I'm here, the reminder, uh, part of the reason this whole video, this whole build and everything, uh, we're doing a live stream from right here on Saturday. So, links and stuff will be in the description for that. Sorry, that was the only bag I had. That's okay, Sanrio, these are expensive bags. All right, there's our fittings. Thank you, Kyle. You're welcome. All right, we'll see you Saturday, bye-bye. Bye. It was very nice of Kyle to uh, meet up with us today and let us grab some of these extra fittings, which is going to let me, hopefully, hopefully, knock on wood, finish this build. We also got a nice Sanrio surprises bag, which is just a bonus. I did some extra work late last night that I didn't really film much, but I wanted to update you on. The cable management, or the uh, routing of cables to the motherboard has been largely taken care of. Other than the power cables, I've plugged most of the necessary cables for front panel and whatnot into the motherboard. So we've got our USB 3.2 Gen 2 cable coming over here, USB 3.0 right there, front panel connectors, and even HD audio. And I used a little black pen there to try to try to mask some of the colors that were popping out a little bit. I also plugged in this extension right here, which is a single three pin, five volt RGB header. And I have a six way splitter from EK that's going to allow me to plug in stuff like the CPU block, the GPU block, uh, the two extra fans that we have that aren't Lee and Lee Uni fans. And that makes me feel a little bit better about our progress in getting the RGB lighting set up because that's one of those other potentially annoying things that uh, still needs to be worked out. For the Lee and Lee Uni fans, the three pack comes with this little control unit here. So I need to plug this in via USB and I'll mount this back behind the motherboard tray. This has four channels. Each channel can control one set of Lee and Lee Uni fans, which is perfect because I have four sets of Lee and Lee fans. Three in the bottom, three in the top, One's gonna be on this side rad, and I'm gonna do one here as well for an exhaust at the back. And that should allow me to connect all those up to just one of these control units. Beyond that, I also did a flush of our two new radiators just to make sure they are prepped and ready to go, and that gave them a little bit of time to dry out overnight from where I got a little bit of overflow there. So radiators and fans are next. I also need to install these two remaining 2.5 inch Crucial MX500 drives for the other half of our SSD storage. And thankfully, we also have plenty of fittings now so we can finish out the water cooling loop. Let's get back to work. So here's the dark secret of the Lian Li Uni fans. This is this is how they're all connected, to be perfectly fair and honest. And uh, this is sort of how it works. It's got a USB that goes over to your motherboard so you can get uh, the software control. It's got a couple leads that come off of it so you can sync up with the RGB LED controls on your motherboard and also so you can monitor fan speed with that one. This is just SATA power to power this unit right here. And then this unit, like I said, has four channels coming off of it. Each of them has one RGB control and one fan power and those go over to this little connector that snaps onto the side of your Li Li Uni fan or fans if you're connecting two or three of them up together. So at this point, most of the wiring is done. You might've noticed that I'm using the uh, cables that came with the power supply for right now. I did get a follow-up from Joey and we do have cables planned and he is making them like right now, but they're not gonna be here in time for this video. So I will be doing a final follow-up, doing some testing and stuff on this system next week while the giveaway is still ongoing. But for now, I wanna get the system filled and everything. So we're using the stock cabling, which honestly looks just fine. It's still sleeved and everything, but Joey came up with a design for the custom cabling that's really gonna finish this build off, I think, really nicely. Right now that we're getting the water cooling loop installed and I need to do this in a very particular order if I want to actually make it function, I'm starting off with this 240 millimeter radiator and we transferred the fan and the reservoir pump onto this, flipped the fan over. Nice thing about these uh, Li Li Uni fans as well is they come with stickers. So if you flip them so that the back side is showing, you can still put that sticker on there and give it a nice clean look. 
regardless of which side of the fan you're looking at. Down here I'm using some existing fittings that I have. They're not going to match with the uh, EK Torque series quite as well, but these are tucked out of the way. So I just have one wrapped around here to get my tubing coming up the side to go over to the CPU where I need it to go. And I haven't cut this yet because I want to cut it to the proper length and try to waste as little of it as I possibly can. The next step though is going to be to get this radiator installed, which I'm installing through the back because there's going to be fans on the back. So I need to mount through those to get this attached. And then I can figure out the tubing going from the bottom radiator over to this because that's going to be, I think, where we have the tightest fits that uh, I'm going to need to hopefully get things to work out properly. Also, I guess I do still have a few more cables to plug in. So I've gotten past what I was thinking would be the hardest part, which is uh, the one tiny little run down here between the front radiator, the bottom radiator, and the pump reservoir combo, and we got that in. It took a bit of finagling. There's barely enough clearance. There's actually a little bit of contact there, which is a little bit of a faux pas, but I think it's okay. I got a few tool marks on one of the fittings in there, but like I said, I'm pretty sure it's secure and it's gonna fit properly. However, with this fitting here needing to be angled a little bit, I've discovered this little bit, this little uh, catch here, which allows the Lianli Li Uni fans to connect to each other, is now protruding enough that it conflicts with that, and I don't think I can move it very much. So it wouldn't be a full-on custom water-cooled build without needing to bust out the Dremel for something, so I'm just going to slice off this little plastic piece off of the fan. I thought I was almost done, and then I was feeding a cable through to plug in these fans, and it uh, popped off the addressable RGB header connector right here, so... Just, just, just plugging that back in. These things are a lot easier when there's not a radiator mounted in front of it that would be really, really difficult to remove. Uh, I think I got it. <laughs> okay, I think I got it. Oh, Good luck. <laughs> So with every water-cooled build, you come to a point where you think, oh, the end is in sight. I just need to do this, this, and this, and then I can fill the loop, and then I'll be like, finished. And we got to that point with this build, after I got that initial part of the loop set up, and I was reinstalling the fans and everything, I tried to be really, really careful with the cable management in this build, and I started early cable managing some stuff back there, and making sure I had enough wiring on these little Lian Li fan attachments. There's one of these for each set of Lian Li fans, or just for a single Lian Li fan, if you're only connecting up one of them. All of them were wired up to that hub in the back center of the case. And then I found with this set down here, I had to orient the connector so that the wire is right here on this corner, and I didn't have quite enough space. And where I had wired all that stuff up behind there was behind where all the cabling is now for the Corsair SF750 power supply. And all that cabling, I'm gonna be taking out and replacing once Joey sends the custom sleeve cables for the final version of this build. So that is why part two of this build is ending right now. Even though we got this loop set up, even though the tubing is looking really nice, and I think it is uh, kind of a challenge to get soft tubing like this to look aesthetically pleasing as well. I'm really liking how this entire system is coming together, and especially just little details like the, the Lian Lee stickers that they provide you so you can put them on the back of the fans, and it just gives it a little bit of a cleaner finish overall. But if you guys can bear with me and wait just a little bit longer, next week I'll do part three, the final, video on this build with the custom sleeved cabling installed with a water cooling loop all filled up and the lighting software installed 
and uh, the system functional and up and running. And I'll see if I can run some basic tests on it as well. In the meantime, I'm at least gonna kick off the giveaway for this build along with the charity live stream that's again happening on Saturday. Uh, that's the 26th, starting at 10 a.m. Pacific time. I'll be streaming on my YouTube channel. Kyle will also be streaming, so follow us on Twitter if you'd like to know the details on that. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching this video. It's been quite a while since I put together a build of this caliber, and I'm liking how it's coming together, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the finished product in video number three. That should be up next week, so if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel already, uh, consider subscribing to be notified of when that happens. You can also click the little bell icon and stuff. That really helps too. Check out my store at paulshardware.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options if you wanna help support my channel. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button on your way out. I'll post links to all the parts I use down in the video's description. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.